In Zambia, rural poverty is said to be around 77% and mostly affects women and girls. This poverty has been described as one of the factors that lead to gender inequality in the country. This is coupled with other factors, all described under the umbrella terms gender-based violence that undermine the welfare of women. The Zambian government has however devised several interventions to counter the ramifications of GBV. With a view of finding lasting solutions to such topical issues, several delegates around the world convened in New York in the United States of America for a conference. This city is said to be one that never goes to sleep. It is business as usual as people from all walks of life go about fulfilling their daily diaries which support their livelihood. New York City was the meeting area for hundreds of gender activists for the 2016 60th session of the Commission of the Status of Women CSW conference. The CSW is a principal global intergovernmental body exclusively dedicated to the promotion of gender equality and the empowerment of women. A functional commission of the Economic and Social Council, the CSW was established by Council Resolution 11 of 21 June 1946. And during the commission's annual two-week session, representatives of UN member states, civil society organizations and UN entities gather at UN headquarters in New York. For this reason, the gender activists and policy makers converged in New York in a similar manner for the 60th session of the CSW. The 10-day 60th session of the CSW opened on March 14, 2016. It was under the theme, Women Empowerment, Sustainable Development. The Zambian delegation was led by Gender Minister Nkandaluo. First Lady Esther Lungu was also among the Zambian delegates. Keynote was Professor Luo's presentation of Zambia's position paper on gender. The minister highlighted several interventions as implemented by government, all to walk the talk in gender issues, especially for the benefit of the Zambian women. Chairperson, Zambia wishes to reaffirm its commitment towards the advancement of women, with particular emphasis on promoting women's empowerment and attainment of gender equality in all spheres of life. The government has guaranteed women's human rights through the supreme law of the land, which is the Republican Constitution. On 5th January 2016, the Republican President, His Excellency Mr. Edgar Chagualungu, assented to a new constitution, and it is, has incorporated gender equity and equality in all aspects of life in line with international, regional, and sub-regional instruments. Professor Luo had a packed program punctuated by several side events. Meanwhile, notable during this year's CSW was Zambia's video presentation on various stakeholders supported gender interventions. Violence and early child marriage. The presence of a one-stop center in the community has helped provide social, medical and police services to victims of sexual the video presentation had a panel discussion aftermath during which Professor Luo reiterated that Zambia is walking the talk in the anti-gender based violence crusade. The minister also hinted that the amended constitution had also provided for gender equity. Once you accept something, it becomes a society norm, you start looking normal. But GBV or child marriage is not normal. And therefore our traditional leaders are on board. And also in partnership are the civil society organizations and private sector. And together we have formed a consortium that has really, really worked so hard to bring the numbers of GBV and the number of uh, child marriage to the levels that we are. And as you saw, we don't think that uh, the fight in GBV should be something that is in the offices. We've taken it to the village level. So Professor Luo also explained that the traditional leadership structures have also been engaged in their role to curb GBV and its other offshoot vices. And this was attested to by Chief Nyampande of the Nsenga people of Petawuke in the eastern province, who observed that child marriage is the biggest form of GBV that rural Zambia is grappling with. But we can testify 
that we are living witnesses to this theme. This can be shown by the engagement of traditional leaders in many programs that are aimed at empowering women and girls, such as the campaign against forced and child marriages and gender-based violence, he for she campaign, and many other, many other projects aimed at empowering women economically, including ownership of land. Gender-based violence, or GBV in short, continues to be a huge problem in Zambia. The video presentation, especially the new devised approach of engaging the traditional leadership structures, did not fall short of praise. The involvement of traditional leaders, I think that is very critical because uh, we need to change the way our people have been thinking culturally and traditionally. When you move together with the traditional leaders who are actually the custodians of our, our, our people, whether it's in rural areas or in other uh, growth points, that will certainly go a very long way. Well done, and I think from the region we can see we are moving very, very close to eliminating early child marriage. If we are going to have anything successful, we should start by engaging the Ministry of Education to start ensuring that all the children, all the female children are registered, going to the village level and make sure that all the people, all the children that are victims of a child marriage that are saved, survivors of child marriage, are given a second chance in education. And for its presentation, benefits for the country's GBV interventions were almost immediate. The United Kingdom has since committed 30 million British pounds towards gender-based violence cases in Zambia. Baroness Verma, Parliament Undersecretary of State for the Department of International Development, DFID, disclosed this in the panel discussion. Baroness Verma added that Zambia also stands to benefit from the $25 million committed by her government towards research on GBV in Africa. So we're providing funding to Zambia as part of the £36 million programme, Accelerate Action to End Child Marriage. With other donor support, this programme has the potential to reach approximately 2.5 million girls at risk of child marriage and support those who marry early. We are also seeing good progress and strong commitment in these places. However, none of us can be complacent. Globally, there's so much to do. Meanwhile, in the backdrop of presenting position papers during panel discussions, the First Lady described her attending the CSW as a privilege. Mrs. Lungu said the theme of the CSW was something close to her heart, especially the aspect of economic empowerment for women. She noted that women are pivotal to the existence of humanity and as such they needed to be empowered. It has been a privilege uh, for me to join the global community and the leadership. The theme is uh, something close to my heart. It is my passion and uh, that is actually what I've been doing in the last one year, 2015, which is the economic empowerment of women, especially in the rural areas. One of the side panel discussions was one on realizing women economic empowerment in rural areas. The discussion centered on exemplifying success stories of women's empowerment, in particular those in rural areas. Mrs. Lungu observed the need to address poverty-related issues that affect the rural woman. The rural poverty remains one of the greatest challenges faced by many African countries. One of the greatest resources that can be used to eradicate this vice is, of course, the local people, more specifically the women. In order to achieve this, women in rural must be empowered through cooperatives and micro-enterprises. Mrs. Lungu was also part of the panel discussion on Africa's Year of Human Rights with particular focus on the rights of women, opportunities and challenges. The forum was organized by the UN Office of the Special Advisor on Africa. Mrs. Lungu reiterated that in her duties as First Lady in Zambia, she has appreciated several experiences by women at all levels which has indicated that the female fraternity is more than ready to push the sustainable development agenda. 
This is in the backdrop of the AU's 2016 theme of this year, being an African year of human rights with particular focus on the rights of women, which is enshrined in the broader African development agenda with a time frame of up to 2063. Moderator, from my personal experience, having interacted with women at grassroots level, allow me to highlight the following challenges. National constitutions that do not guarantee the rights of women remain a hindrance to sustainable development. The non-domestication of international, regional, and sub-regional instruments continue to sabotage women's inclusion in the sustainable development agenda. The First Lady also called on African governments to accelerate the implementation of programs that address the plight of disabled persons. She said this is because the disabled are mostly severely affected by any form of social, economic, and political justice in any society. This was during a panel discussion theme operationalizing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development for Women and Girls with Disabilities. It saddens me that people with disabilities are still not able to fully access and experience their human rights, especially in sub-Saharan Africa. The reality on the ground and from my outreach programs designed for women, girls, and children with disabilities in the rural areas of my country, Zambia, leaves much to be desired. It was not, however, all UN business for Mrs. Lungu during the CSW. She also held bilateral talks with some officials from the Millennium Challenge Corporation, MCC. In the meeting where then Zambia's ambassador to the United States in Washington, Palan Molonda, while the MCC team was led by MCA, Zambia Chief Executive Officer, Pamela Wadia. Mrs. Lungu described the MCA Zambia water supply and sanitation as well as drainage projects being implemented in Lusaka as one that will help alleviate challenges faced by women. Water is life because it, uh, it is the focal point of, human, of humanity, so to speak. Without water, really, I don't think people would survive. So you have, uh, through your projects, created uh, empowerment for our people. You have uh, given skills to our people, the technical assistance that you are giving to uh, the, the water sector, the Lusaka Water and Storage Company and the Lusaka City Council, which we should really appreciate. Meanwhile, Mrs. Walia explained that the project would reduce water wastage from 48% to 25% in terms of supply, adding that all the nine project contracts have already been signed and contractors identified. What happens is that because there has been no major investment in the water sector, uh, most of the pipes leak on the physical side and just the entire system has become inefficient. And then on the commercial side, there have been illegal connections. And in some cases, there are just no meters connected. So we lose water that is provided by the water utility. And they lose income as a result. So we want to reduce that unaccounted for water by the end of the, of the project. Meanwhile, the CSW also offered an important opportunity for member states, international institutions, and the civil society to call for urgent action to end gender inequality. For Oxfam Zambia, the theme was described as timely. Gender specialist in the organization, Gilbert Chanda, noted that women will be adversely affected by the adverse weather patterns as they are apparently the main food producers at subsistence level. Uh, when we look at uh, the impact of El Nino uh, in southern Africa, uh, it will have impact on both men and women, but the impact will be more on women because they are the most vulnerable and uh, look, uh, focusing on the fact that uh, poverty has a feminine face. So we would want to actually come up with a lot of uh, mitigation measures to ensure that uh, we actually prepare the women to be ready for the shocks that will come along.
On the sidelines of the CSW, the Zambia Umbrella Civil Society Organization, NGOCC, hosted a panel discussion on women economic empowerment interventions in Zambia, highlighting achievements and lessons learned. And Gender Permanent Secretary Edwidge Mutale outlined government's interventions on gender-based violence. The government is also committed to ensuring that women have access to finances to enable them to engage in other productive ventures because we cannot just say uh, it will be agricultural based, but there are so many others. We've got people in the urban areas. What will those women be doing? Because they don't have access to land on which to till, but they can be engaged in other uh, businesses that can sustain them. And NGOCC Executive Director Ngwase Mwale called on government to quicken the implementation of women and girls empowerment interventions. Both women and men are a critical component to making sure that the sustainable development goals are realized by 2030. We've seen over time that, um, especially when it comes to the issues of rural women, rural women on many occasions have been left out uh, you know, from the development agenda. Women in general have been left out from the decision-making table. And when we talk about um, in countries where there is uh, conflict, women are not on the uh, peace negotiation tables. And even when you talk about climate um, mitigation, women are not really being taken on as an integral part of uh, addressing some of the climate mitigation issues. So this theme for me and for the for, for NGOCC and the larger women's movement is really coming in at the opportune time. The Young Women Christian Association, YWCA, the implementers of the I Care About Her campaign, expressed their intent to meeting the targets of the campaign in the eight districts where this program is being implemented. This intervention was also highlighted as one of the highly successful programs at the CSW. And uh, this intervention basically uh, brought together Oxfam as a, a funding partner, YWCA, and also the government so that we can continue uh, with the good relationship that we, um, uh, we, we have here to uh, fight gender-based violence and um, aging governments that we can continue even back home uh, to collaborate and also to work together in uh, fighting and ending uh, gender-based violence in our country, Zambia. As this year's CSW came to a close, all delegates had hoped that their respective governments and civil societies back home would continue to collaborate. This is in light of escalating GBV cases amid the tough economic times.